Hello, this is uh, Joe Snyder, and we're going to talk about normal distributions in this video. This is a PowerPoint deck that I created back in 2008 to talk about uh, how do you calculate probabilities from normal distributions, because that's really what they're all about, and being able to uh, graph them is one thing, but what you really want to do is to be able to calculate probabilities from the data from just a mean and a standard deviation on your data you can create this type of a chart um, if it follows a normal distribution pattern so this is called the standard normal distribution it looks like a bell curve uh, the things on the horizontal axis here the minus four to plus four those are called z-scores um, those are calculations based upon the x value, here's the uh, formula for it, z equation equal x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So any x value that's along your x axis has a corresponding z and it's based upon putting it through this formula. It can be positive or negative and the English way to state what a z-score z-value is, it's the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean. So if your uh, x is, uh, your mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 10, then 110 would be here, one standard deviation away from the mean. So the z-value, again, is how many standard deviations are you away from the mean, minus side or plus. Here's an example. Normal distribution, like I said, of a mean of 100 and standard deviation of one of 10. So you're seeing anywhere from your 100, which is your mean, <clears throat> excuse me, down to 90, 80, 70, 60, and the no minus side, and then on the plus side, 110, 120, 130, 140. So you can see over here on the right, z is equal to plus 1, the x value is 110 z equal plus 2, that's two standard deviations, two 20s, would be 120. Three tens would be 30, so you got um, 100 plus 30 is 130. You can go negative 10 at a time, 90, 80, 70, that'd be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Kind of see the pattern. Now, looking up z values in statistical reference tables um, is what you're doing is you're looking them up in order to be able to find a probability value. There are Excel formulas that do this for you too but the way to do it by hand is to go ahead and have a reference table of z lookup uh, values and what it's going to give you back are probabilities of these shaded regions. Now the tables themselves are all geared toward, at least the ones I've seen, geared toward a left shading. So when you do a left shading like is what's represented here on these charts, uh, that's essentially how it's organized. So that, that's going to be the easiest and all you do is look it up and you get your answer. Within a Z lookup, the rows are in tenths, like if you had over here one negative 1.17, it would be the row of negative 1.1, and then the 07 is going to be your column uh, for the hundreds. And then the probability is what you're looking up in the cell. Here's an example of calculating uh, and what the I call it a recipe or formulaic way of doing it um, step by step never changes when you have a left kind of shading or I call it a left problem you have two steps the method to solve for the probability is calculate z for the given x then look it up in the table and that's your probability you're done so left hand problems are the easiest Right hand problems is where you have some right shading past a certain number. And it doesn't matter whether it's a large shading or a small shading. Uh, any 
shading to the right, you have three steps in your method to solve for the probability. You calculate your z and look it up, same as in the left problem, but you add this additional step. Subtract the lookup value from 1. Now, why do you do that? Um, if 1 is 100% and it includes everything being shaded, and then you take away what's shaded to the left, then you get what's shaded to the right. So again, if 100% is shading everything under this curve, and you take away, subtract, the lookup value, which is everything to the left, right here, then you're going to end up with everything to the right. So that's why that step 3 is in there. Subtract the lookup value, which is everything to the left, that's this white area, and then you're going to get 100% minus that part, which is going to be your blue shaded area to the right. So three steps in solving for a right-hand problem. The only other uh, area that you're concerned with is a between. So in this case, what's being represented is it wants to know the probability between 90 and 110. So in this case, you'll notice that down here you have five steps, but they're very similar to what you've done before. You're calculating the Z value for 90, the Z value for 110. That's the first two steps. They're minus 1 and plus 1 when you calculate it out. Then you're looking them up in the table. The lookup value comes out to be 0 0.1587. Values 0.8413 minus 0.1587. You get 68.26% or 0.6826 as the shaded area in the middle. Now think about that for a second, why that step number five, how that works. If I take everything from 110 left, and then I subtract everything from 90 to the left, I'm going to get what's in the middle. Again, if I take everything from 110 all the way over to the left, and then I subtract everything from 90 all the way to the left, I'm going to get what's in between. So that's really what step five is all about.